Good day, everyone. I am Lona Pekubalan, a student of Ed 305 TTH 1 to 2 30 p.m. And for this video, I am going to share to you a five minute discussion about my chosen topic that I learned best in my Ed 305 class, specifically in Chapter 5, entitled Assessment for Students with Exemptional Needs. Now, my chosen topic that I learned best in Chapter 5 is the topic about Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder or also known with the acronym ADHD. So what is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder or ADHD? According to Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is seen as one of the most common neurodevelopmental disorders of childhood and this condition falls under the category of physical and health impairments. It is usually first diagnosed in childhood and often lasts into adulthood. Children with ADHD may have trouble paying attention, controlling impulsive behaviors, or acting without thinking about what the results will be, or sometimes people with this condition may be overly active. Now, what are the signs and symptoms of ADHD? According to Chad's National Resource Center on ADHD, a child who is diagnosed with ADHD might daydream a lot, forget or lose things a lot, squirm or fidget, talk too much, make careless mistakes or take unnecessary risk, having a hard time resisting various temptations, having trouble in taking turns and experiencing difficulty in getting along with others. Now, what are the possible causes of ADHD? Scientists are studying causes and risk factors in an effort to find better ways to manage and reduce the chances of a person having ADHD. The causes and risk factors of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder are unknown, but current studies and researches show that genetics play an important role. In addition to genetics, scientists are also studying other possible causes and risk factors of ADHD, including brain injury, exposure to lead during pregnancy or at young age, alcohol and tobacco use during pregnancy, premature development or premature delivery, and the last one is the low birth weight. At this moment, to further understand attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, I will present to you two examples of presentations of ADHD given by the American Psychiatric Association in the year 2013 so that we future teachers will be able to easily identify if our student has this condition or not, or if certain behaviors they are showing are signs of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. The first example is known as the predominantly inattentive presentation. So in this presentation, the child or the student is often unable to sustain attention. They are also easily distracted, have difficulties organizing, make careless mistakes, tend to lose things, and maybe sometimes be so forgetful. Take note that although standardized instruments are used to confirm the presence of this disorder, we should also bear in mind that teachers' observations are also essential in this condition. The second and the last example is also known as the predominantly hyperactive impulsive presentation. Now, in this presentation of ADHD, students fidget excessively or may have difficulty in sitting. They also appear restless and are constantly on the go or may be identified as hyperactive. 
while impulsivity occurs when a student has difficulty waiting in turn, blurts out answers, and constantly interrupts others. As with attention-only deficits, hyperactivity must interfere to a significant extent with the ability of the student to learn and to demonstrate what he or she understands. That's it for my short discussion about my chosen topic that I learned best in my Ed 305 class, specifically in Chapter 5 entitled Assessment for Students with Exemptional Needs. Once again, I am Lona Pekubalan. Thank you for watching. Goodbye and have a great day.